Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Patrick Cathedral as we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints. Please take a moment to silence all cell phones and electronic devices. For today's Mass, we ask that you please do not join in any of the singing and speak the congregational responses in a quieter than normal speaking voice so as to avoid the spread of viruses. The intention for this Mass is for the people of the diocese and Joseph Fazolori and the celebrant will be Bishop Gaynor. Golden evening bright. 
brightens in the west. Soon, soon to faithful warriors comes their rest. Sweet is the calm of paradise, the blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. But then there breaks a yet more glorious day. Saints triumphant rise in bright array. The King of glory passes on this way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this great solemnity of all the saints, we gather on this Lord's Day to celebrate the Most Holy Eucharist. We do so this day with a particular intention. The bishop is able to greet the congregation with those words, I just did, peace. Be with you. We gather today praying for the peace and unity of our nation at a time when we've seen such discord and violence in our communities. We pray to the Prince of Peace and to all the angels and saints to guide us into a time of peace and mutual respect. Let us now, brothers and sisters, ask the communion of saints to assist us, that we might each acknowledge our own sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and, to and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo, 
et in terra pax hominibus, mone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratias agimus tibi, Propter manium gloriam tuam, Domine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater omnipotens, Domine fili unigenite, Iesu Christe. Domine Deus anius Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, qui tolis peccata mundi, Sucipe de precationem nostram, qui sedes ad dexteram patris, miserere nobis, quaniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, Tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, 
who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the great time of distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, 
we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
since our Mass will conclude with exposition of the Blessed Sacrament preceding the, um, a time of adoration and then the Eucharistic procession, I just want to say personally thank you to everyone who is here for this special celebration of the Solemnity of All Saints and here to pray for the unity of our nation. Especially I thank those who are able to remain and walk in the Eucharistic procession. This is an ancient, long-standing tradition in our church. In times of sickness, in times of civil discord, and contention, to take our Eucharistic Lord into the streets and to pray that the Prince of Peace will restore health, restore harmony and peace among all of our citizens. This is our prayer as we gather today. This is our prayer as we walk behind the Lord in procession. In 426 AD, Saint Augustine of Hippo, one of the headliners in the communion of saints, published one of his great spiritual classics. It's called De Civitate Dei Contra Paganos. We know it as the city of God. The background for that spiritual classic is very interesting. Fifteen years before Augustine wrote that city of God, in the year 410, Rome had been sacked. Rome was devastated. By that time, the church had grown significantly. Many people abandoned their pagan religion and became Christians, were baptized, members of the church. The state went from persecuting Christianity to promoting Christianity. But in 410, with the fall of Rome, some of those who held on to the pagan ways said the reason our city fell is because of those Christians. They have abandoned the gods of Rome, and now Rome is being punished. Now Augustine knew that to be a lie, and so he wrote the city of God to explain that it was not Christianity that caused the fall of Rome, but rather Christianity introduced into this temporal place into onto earth the city of God and our civilization our culture our society is meant to be a mirror of that great ultimate citizenship toward which we are headed the heavenly Jerusalem the city of God Augustine wanted to justify the Christian faith against the pagans. Brothers and sisters, we see today a tremendous clash between the city of God and the earthly city, as Augustine called it. And so today we pray, we pray that that discord, that dissension, the pandemonium that we see in so many sectors of our nation might be quelled and the Prince of, Prince of Peace might reign, and our civil society might better reflect the city of God. That's how we recognize holiness. That's how we recognize the saints whom we celebrate today. They reflected the city of God in the here and now. You know, as Catholics, we celebrate the Feast of Saints individually and groups of saints throughout the year. But I think it's important for us, as we do annually on this one day, to celebrate a feast of all the saints. Those who have been canonized and are well known, like St. Patrick, St. Augustine, and our own family members those whose holiness have touched our lives, and even perhaps after a period of purgation, if that was necessary in God's judgment and mercy, are now in the glory of heaven. Parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, family members, pastors, priests, religious, neighbors, people who have 
who have shown us the presence of the city of God by their holy lives. And by celebrating this feast of all the saints, and remember, we're all part of that body of Christ. Today we celebrate the church triumphant, those who are our, and, and listen to the words of the liturgy, it talks about our homeland, the heavenly Jerusalem, the citizenship that is ours. The preface especially will speak in those terms. We celebrate those who are in glory in the body of Christ. We celebrate those who are being cleansed, who are in purgation and purgatory in the body of Christ, whose feast is tomorrow, the holy souls. And we know that they are destined for glory, there's no question. They need some time, though, to allow God to purify them from the imperfections that they held on to as they drew their last breath. And then we are in the body of Christ here, the city of God, living in the earthly city in the church militant, the church that's still doing battle for our souls, doing battle to manifest the city of God in the world, in the earthly city. That reading from the book of Revelation is a beautiful one, but it is preceded by a very important passage. There, right before the reading we heard proclaimed, St. John, the author of the book of Revelation, the seer, is given a vision of the end of the world. And in the verses preceding the ones that were just proclaimed, we hear John described how the, earth, the sun turned dark, the moon turned blood red, and there was a great earthquake over the entire world. And of course, people tried to hide in order to save themselves. And they cry out in this clamor, this, this turmoil, this disastrous situation, who can survive? And that's where we hear our passage. Salvation is from God, who is on the throne, and from the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That's who can survive whatever catastrophe, whatever difficulties are here in the earthly city. Those who keep our focus on Jesus Christ, on his mystery, his paschal mystery, his death and resurrection, we can survive the catastrophe. We have hope. We have the security of our faith and the security of our community, which cannot be divided. We are, in fact, of many different minds and attitudes and ideologies, but that too needs healing. We need to be a united church, united together with Christ, together with one another. In the gospel, our Lord takes the crowd up to the mountain and that certainly has to evoke for us a scene of the Old Testament where Moses went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, and God gave Moses, he revealed to Moses the law of the first covenant. And now the Son of God takes the crowd up the mountain. And he reveals not a law, but promises. Promises that tell us that no matter what happens in the earthly city, if we accept them in union with Christ, it can lead to our blessedness, to our holiness. You see, in baptism, you and I received one common vocation, the vocation to be saints, the vocation to be holy women and holy men. And in the church, through our baptism and the sacraments, through the living word of God, through our worship, through our prayer, through our common service of those in need, God has given us every means to fulfill that vocation of holiness. You and I simply need to surrender to the power of God the Holy Spirit and to the grace that God showers upon us. As we celebrate the Feast of All the Saints, we don't add anything to them. They don't need anything from us. They don't need our honor. God has given them everything in the blessedness of heaven. But our celebration of their feast should inspire us to be more urgent in our desire for holiness. 
to try to be more authentic as witnesses of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, as we live in the earthly city. Let us ask our Blessed Mother and all the saints of heaven and the holy souls in purgatory to assist us to bring about peace in the earthly city and to be even better, more fervent representatives of the city of God as we live our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we rejoice in the company of all the saints, confident that they foretell our future victory in Christ Jesus. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians will rediscover the blessedness of spiritual poverty and meekness we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who mourn because of war and violence will one day know the comfort of peace and security. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the way of mercy will lead men and women of goodwill to reach out to those on the margins of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this celebration will give us hope to pursue the path of holiness with sincerity and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we do not see clearly what lies ahead. Hear our prayers and give us the grace to trust that your love will be made perfect in us in your time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the Church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the people of this diocese, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, remembering especially Joseph Fazolari. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Beati mundo corde, quoniam ipsi deum videbunt. Beati pacifici, Quaniam fili dei vocabuntur. Beati qui persecutionem patiuntur. Propter Justitia, quaniam ipsorum est. Renium celo. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. Blessed are these, for theirs 
as is the kingdom of heaven. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are these, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Three. 